In this tutorial, we'll go over several ways to add character meshes to the MP system. For this example, I chose Character Factory Volume 3 Rue Special by Talking Drums, the Adventure Character and FPS Starter Pack, both by Bugramov Maxim. These are some of the best crafted, skinned and rigged characters you can find on the marketplace, in my opinion. As a bonus, Bugramov made the Adventure Character free and you can even download a free sample set of first-person arms. First, make sure that the newly added meshes use the common hierarchy of the UE4 mannequin. The vast majority of the marketplace character assets and animations use this hierarchy. If the bone hierarchy doesn't show up in your viewport, you can select character, bones and enable all hierarchy. The new Unreal Engine 5 mannequin has a few extra bones, especially in its spine, which makes it currently a lot more cumbersome to retarget, even with the new retargeter, so we won't use that for now. Now that we've confirmed that these assets share the same hierarchy, we can compare it to the MPS skeleton. In essence this one has the exact same hierarchy as the UE4 mannequin, however there are two extra bones. These bones are at the very end of the chains and aren't weighted, so they don't affect the animations or meshes in any intrusive way. MPS uses them for weapon animations and sight alignment. The first method will simply add any compatible mesh using the MP systems tools. Go to Blueprints, Core, Main Menu Pawn and open the Blueprint Menu Viewer. You're presented with a comment box that gives focus to the only code we need to edit in this blueprint. Simply select Secondary Mesh and choose your character, then change the main material to NoRender. If you don't have the material instance of NoRender go to the Master Materials folder and create a material instance of M underscore NoRender Master Material. If you jump in game now nothing has changed, because we need to load the new mesh through the main menu. Load the main menu level and you'll see the fully functioning mesh. It's that easy. If you want more customizability, follow method 2. Method 2 allows you to have multiple submeshes and variations. Undo the changes in the menu viewer and close it. Go back to the blueprints and duplicate CBP MPS. Open it and disconnect the event begin play from its following nodes. Open the construction script. Duplicate the vest as many times as you have body parts and rename the duplicates as you see fit. Once again, we want to hide the main mesh from rendering in the viewport, so apply the no render material instance to it. To be able to see your changes in the preview, open the parent blueprint called MPS Master Blueprint. In its construction script check New Visibility under Set Visibility. This is an optional step and should be reset when done. Back in our child blueprint, we can set the meshes for the body parts as shown in the video. Don't be discouraged if you don't see any changes. Once you've applied all the meshes, close the child blueprint and then open it up again. Now the meshes should be updated. Lastly, go to core under blueprints and open up the game master MPS blueprint. 
Find the spawn player function and change the player to the newly created blueprint. Repeat the same step inside the respawn player function. Unlike method 1, this time, the changes take effect right away and you don't need to load through the main menu. To take this a step further, let's customize our character with detailed first-person arms. Hide any unused or overlapping body parts and replace the arms with hands underscore zero two for example. Lastly, I want to show you what to do, if you have a clipping helmet or mask covering your first person view. One option would be editing the near clip plane in project settings. However, that comes with other issues and will likely also clip your gun away. Instead, let's edit blueprints. In the MPS Master Blueprint, find the Camera Offset section in its main graph. Disconnect the Flow node from the Action button and move it over to the right. Right-click and create a new custom event and call it Toggle TP. Right-click, search for the new event, and connect it with the Action button. Done in here, let's switch back to the child blueprint. Call the same action button and create an if statement. Ask for is TPC? Get the head mesh and search for set hidden in game and set cast hidden shadow. Duplicate those and connect them up with a branch as shown. Coming from the false statement, set new hidden and new cast hidden shadow to true. Drag off the action button and find the toggle TP function created earlier. Make sure the flow of the graph is connected and tested in game. We spawn with the helmet still in view, but if we toggle between third person and first person, the issue is gone. To fix the spawn problem, simply connect event begin play with our toggle TP function. For the third method, we're going to use the adventure character and export the SK underscore man. By right clicking on it, selecting asset actions and export. Most of the export settings can be unchecked for a simple mesh export but keep vertex colors to retain the vertex information. Open the exported mesh in Blender or any other DCC software. Delete the default cube and change the unit scale to 0.01 meters to match Unreal Engine's units. Expand the mesh in the outliner. Drag off the highest object in the hierarchy and place it somewhere else in this scene, as shown, and delete it. This step is important, because for Unreal, we need the root to be first in the hierarchy, otherwise the skeletons won't match up. Let's hide the mesh and focus on the skeleton. Hit tab to enter edit mode. Select the head bone, duplicate it and right-click to snap it back to its previous position. 
rename it to camera underscore FP and adjust its location. To open the transform menu in Blender, press N. Copy the XYZ transforms from the video description. Next, shift right click the head bone and select parent, make, keep offset. This makes the camera underscore FP bone the child of the head bone. To create the weapon bone, simply duplicate any immediate child of the hand bone, such as thumb underscore zero one underscore R. Rename it to weapon and change its position to zero zero zero. Now the skeleton is updated and we can unhide the mesh. Select the mesh and then shift select the skeleton. Export FBX and copy the export settings as shown. Especially, the orientation is important to correctly export to Unreal Engine. Import the file to Unreal Engine and choose the MPS skeleton as its source skeleton. Make sure to use T0 as RefPose, optionally you can also use the MPS Physics Skeleton or generate a new one on import. Now the custom mesh uses the MPS Skeleton with its camera bone as well as all its virtual bones. To use our new mesh, duplicate the CBP underscore MPS blueprint and open it. In here, all the code can be deleted as well as the vest mesh. Choose the adventure character for the character mesh. Make sure all the materials have updated. Lastly, open game mode MPS and update the spawn player references for the player. Now you are able to add characters in three different ways to the MP system, each taking no more than a few minutes. In the next tutorial, you'll be adding weapons to the system. Thanks for watching.